hello everyone so in this presentation uh, module 5.2 we will be uh, discussing about the digital resources and what are the common multimodal tools for the ar vr and haptic integration into the in the education so uh, the common multimodal tools for uh, integrating ar vr and haptics in the education uh, it's very necessary to explore that uh, the educators can use and uh, the students can use for their learning purpose. So uh, in this presentation, we will explore the various tools and technologies that are commonly used in AR, VR, and haptic applications in educational settings. So these multimodal tools are essential components in creating immersive and interactive environments that can enhance the learning experience for the students. So we will discuss each of these tools in detail, providing examples of how they are used to create engaging and effective learning experience by the end of this presentation. Hopefully, you will have a deeper understanding of the multimodal tools available for integration of AR, VR, and haptics, and how they can be leveraged to improve uh, student learning outcomes. So, uh, in this slide, I tried to uh, narrow down some of the AR, VR headset that can be used uh, for the educational purposes. So there are uh, more than, uh, there are very high amount of uh, AR, VR headset that can be used, but I have this down to the three. So these are the uh, commonly used in educational settings. So uh, there are three uh, headset, which, uh, as you can see on a screen, Oculus Quest 2, Pico G2 4K, and Google Cardboard headset. So these headsets basically provide students with an immersive and interactive learning experience by allowing them to explore and interact with virtual environments. So we will discuss these different uh, types of the headset available, ranging from simple cardboard, as we can see from the on the right side, to the high-end headset with advanced tracking and haptic capabilities that is on the left side, we can see Oculus Quest. So additionally, we will also see uh, and explore that how each of these headsets can be used in different educational settings from science engineering to history and the arts. So before uh, going to these uh, headsets, so this is a very basic, uh, uh, Google Cardboard headset, which and very cheaper for the students uh, for the learning experience. So this uh, video basically uh, provides you a step-by-step -step guide on how to assemble and use the headset, which is an affordable and accessible option for integrating AR, VR in educational educational settings. So Google Cardboard uses a smartphone, which everyone have uh, in their pockets nowadays to display virtual environments, making it a more cost-effective option for schools and educators who are looking to integrate AI VR technology in their classrooms. So this video tutorial will demonstrate how to download and launch compatible apps, as well as how to adjust focus and lens settings to ensure a clear and immersive experience. By showcasing the use of Google Cardboard, we aim to provide educators uh, with an affordable and easy solution uh, for integrating AR VR technology in their curriculum. So the important thing uh, while selecting the uh, AR VR headset, uh, so we have to list down the pros and cons uh, which needs to be focused while uh, having a AR VR headset. So as I have mentioned in the previous slides, uh, we have uh, list down the three uh, AR VR headset uh, from uh, very high quality and very high expensive to uh, relatively low quality and a cheaper headset. So Oculus Quest 2, basically, it comes with a 64 GB of storage, which makes it a relatively cost-effective option rather than if you need to buy an extra storage uh, card for that. So it can also be used for gaming, education, fitness, and more. It is quite uh, versatile uh, headset. So relatively easy to set up and use. But also there are some cons. So uh, you also may need to uh, purchase additional accessories. So battery life is also limited. And the requirement for a strong and stable interconnection, it is very necessary. So for some, uh, where some remote areas where the internet uh, connection is not that much strong, so it might not be that much useful. 
so the second uh, headset is the pico g2 4k so as the name suggests it has a 4k resolution display provides a high quality vr experience uh, so it's a stand alone vr headset which does not require a pc that also very uh, pro of uh, of that headset and relatively easy to use and set up uh but as it is uh, there are some issues uh, or you can say there are some cons of this headset are like devices does not come with built in storage as we have seen in Oculus Quest 2 it comes with the 64 gb of storage but this these uh, headset does not come with the built in storage and may not be suitable for more intensive vr experiences so availability of accessories may also be limited so which can be a con so the third thing is a google cardboard headset so its cost is as little as 10 dollar uh, it is less than 10 dollar uh, so it's very cheap uh, and only need to download the google cardboard app and slide their phone into the cardboard headset and works with both android and ios smartphones so these are the uh, cons or the benefits of the google cardboard headset but uh, its build quality of the headset uh, is quite low as we have seen uh it's made of a card board so may not have a many features as more expensive options the headset may not fit all head sizes and shapes so after uh, discussing about the ar vr so in this slide uh, we will be showcasing some of the most common used haptic devices in educational setting so as we have already seen this haptic technology basically provides a tactile and realistic experience by simulating the sense of touch and these devices can range from a simple vibration motors to complex robotic arms that provide force feedback so we will discuss the different types of haptic devices available including gloves vest and exoskeletons and explore how each of these devices can be used to enhance the learning experience so there are three uh, haptic devices which are uh, listed down apple robotics haptics gloves g1 and ultra haptics uh, which we will discuss in the next slide so this slide uh, also provides the pros and cons for the haptic devices so we also need to understand that while selecting these haptic devices for our ar we are uh, headset so we need to uh, check the pros and cons and according to our application we have to select that uh, haptic device so haplair robotics basically this device is an open source users can build and customize their own haptic devices uh, force feedback that allows users to feel the resistance and texture and resources and tutorials available for the uh, help user it is very important so cons if we discuss so not a complete haptic system and requires additional components so with the haplet robotics we we may need required uh, additional components to make it fully functional and device may not be suitable for more intensive vr experience and device components may not be widely available so if we look at the haptic uh, gloves g1 so this a high quality cutting edge haptic device uh, provide an immersive and realistic experience for the users designed to be accessible to users with disability so this is one of the very important benefit of this device uh, but as uh, it has a very uh, high benefits high uh, level of experience so the price of haptic glove is still relatively high requires some setup and calibration before use and may limit its accessibility to some users in countries with low budgets uh, if we look at the ultra haptics so this is relatively affordable haptic feedback technology it does not require any physical contact make it a more hygienic option so it works basically on the ultrasound waves so it it, it does not you need like and gloves and uh, other uh, haptic devices you don't need to wear uh, on the hand for the uh, for the feel of the touch so it use uh, it it is a contactless as you can see feedback so technology is compatible with the popular vr uh, platforms so but the uh, cons could be the high cost of integrating the technology into existing systems may not yet be widely adopted or supported by the systems so may not be accessible to all users due to the constraints of ultrasound waves so this video uh, uh, tutorial is basically about the tesla suit which is the state of the art integration of ar vr with the haptics so a uh, haptic device uh, basically this provides a full body feedback this device simulates the sense of touch uh, it also simulates the sense of temperature and even pressure so it make it 
an ideal tool for creating immersive and realistic experience uh, so by uh, showcasing the uh, tesla suit we aim to provide educators with a cutting edge haptic device that can be used to create engaging and interactive learning experience that go beyond teaching method Uh, so this is the as uh, we can see in a video. This Tesla suit is basically a complete uh, haptic feedback for the whole body. So it is uh, a quite uh, immersive experience, but uh, all uh, uh, always it will be very uh, expensive. So uh, this video is basically about the uh, discussing about the uh, this state of the art uh, Tesla suit. So at the end, we need to understand the need for integration of AR, VR, and haptics. So by combining these technologies, these AR, VR, and haptics, uh, educators can create immersive and interactive learning environments that can provide students with a hands-on and realistic experiences. So AR, VR technology allows students to explore virtual environments and interact with digital object, object while haptic technology simulates the sense of touch and provide a realistic feedback so integrating these technologies can uh, so by integration of these technologies can enhance student learning outcomes by providing a more engaging and effective way to learn complex concept so additionally the integration of ar vr and haptics can provide students with experiences that are not possible with the traditional teaching methods such as exploring the human body or visiting historical landmarks so by discussing the need uh, for the air vr and haptics we aim to encourage educators to explore these technologies and consider how they can be used to enhance the teaching method